There's nothing more frustrating than working your butt off, but you just can't lose that stubborn belly fat. It might even feel like it's impossible, but I'm here to tell you it's not. So today I'm going to explain why you're stuck and show you what you need to do to finally get the body you want. All right, you want answers, so let's not waste any time today and get right into it. But the first thing you need to understand if you want to lose stubborn body fat is you have to have a lot of patience. See, the longer you've dieted and the more weight you lose, the more difficult it's going to become to see further weight loss. This is because your metabolism adapts to whatever you do, and the more fat you lose, the more your body's going to fight you. This is basically the body's way of protecting itself against starvation. Progress will slow down over time, and if you get frustrated and backslide because of it, it's gonna make it much harder to continue to see progress, so consistency here is key. So you mentally need to create that expectation going in, because once you accept this, it'll make it easier to follow through instead of spending your time wishing it were different. What this means is you're going to have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You're going to be tired, you're going to be hungry, and it's going to feel like it's not worth the effort sometimes. So you need a strong mental game to make this final push as it's not for the faint of heart. This is because your hormones will be out of whack from the dieting, you'll be burning less calories from everything you do like from exercise, the thermic effect of food, and even your basal metabolic rate will slow. Basically, your body is doing everything it can to keep you from losing more. But just because you have to fight hard doesn't mean always going harder is the answer. Don't get me wrong, you will have to make a hard push, but one of the most common mistakes people make is always going hard and never backing off. As counterintuitive as it may seem, one of the best strategies you can take is actually to back off for a while and take diet breaks where you reduce your cardio some, increase your calorie some, and the reason for this is because of the hormonal and metabolic adaptations that occur from dieting. They just make it so much harder to keep seeing results. But when you take a week or two off from the dieting, it helps sort of reset these adaptations and put your body back in a better position to see fat loss again. Because if your body is fighting you and you just push harder, it's only going to fight back harder, so you have to give it a reason to let its guard down. So what you want to do here is increase your daily calorie intake by about two to 400 calories and maybe also reduce your cardio by about 30 to 50%. This will be enough to make these improvements in your metabolism, but not so much that you'll store a bunch of extra body fat. Because if you take the term diet break too literal and go on some sort of free-for-all, you will set yourself back and only make things harder, which is exactly why I'm not really a big fan of cheat meals, because for one, just the term cheat itself implies that you're doing something wrong, and two, especially at this stage, you can easily undo your entire deficit for the week and more with an uncontrolled blowout. But if you stay diligent, not only do most people not gain weight during the process, some even actually see a little bit of weight loss, and any small amount of weight gain that you get during this process isn't body fat, it's gonna be more contributed to things like increased glycogen stores, which is basically stored energy in your muscles that are gonna be depleted because of the dieting you've done. But with all that said, what if you don't know how many calories you're consuming? Well, that brings me to my next point, which is make sure you start tracking your intake. When a lot of people start losing weight, they'll start with a certain diet with a name and weight will move fine for a while. But no matter what you do, the only way you can possibly lose weight is to eat in a calorie deficit. The problem with relying on things like eating clean is what are you going to do when things stop working? Remember, your metabolism is adaptive so nothing you do will work forever. So by tracking your intake, this way you know how much you're eating and you can make adjustments to get things going again when fat loss stalls. Now I'm not necessarily saying you always have to track your intake or that you can't lose weight without tracking, but when it comes to that last bit of stubborn body fat, it is really helpful, especially if you haven't been doing it already. Which if you haven't been tracking, what I recommend doing is taking the next week and just eating the same. Don't change up what you've been doing, but now actually track it and this way you can see what it actually looks like. Now you have some data to work with and now you can make some adjustments so if you haven't been losing, now you can drop your calories back by maybe 100 to 200 calories and see if that gets things going for you. Another important part about tracking is you can make sure you're getting enough protein in because this is something that a lot of people struggle with and protein is just so important for so many reasons. For one, protein has the highest thermic effect of food, which basically means how many calories your body burns just processing the food you eat, and it's easily the highest as your body burns about 25 to 30 percent of the calories you consume from protein, whereas only about five to eight for carbs and about two to three for fat. 
Protein is also what builds and maintains muscle mass, and the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism will be and the more calories you burn at rest. And three, it's the most filling macronutrient, so especially as calories get lower, which they're naturally going to do when you're at the last stages of your dieting, it's going to help you feel full and make it easier to stick to those lower calories. So what I recommend is eating between about 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. And from there, if you want to do full macro tracking, I recommend taking about 20 to 30% of your calories from fat and then taking the rest of your calories and giving them to carbs. But understand that the most important thing by far is total calories and then protein. Another thing you can do when tracking to help is take a double refeed approach. And this is where you go with back to back days of roughly maintenance calories. And I preferably like to do it around more carbs, usually somewhere around 50% more carbs than you were eating on your low days. What this does is similar to the diet breaks I talked about, where you improve your metabolism and put yourself in a better spot and keep seeing results long term. There was a study that just came out this year from USF that looked at equating total calories but had one group eat the same each day and another eat lower calories five days per week and then two days at maintenance. And what they found was they saw roughly the same amount of fat loss, but the group that did the double refeed approach retained more lean body mass and had less negative adaptations to their metabolism and hormones. And then wrapping up the nutrition side of things, one of the things that I really recommend that can help a lot is planning ahead as much as possible. It really helps set you up for success when you know what you're going to do ahead of time as it's one less thing to worry about, especially during busy days. So this is where meal prep on weekends can really help or even just setting up your tracker the day ahead of time and plan what you're going to eat and that way it's already set and you don't have to think about it and you're less likely to fall into effort mode if your day gets a little crazy. That covers most of what you need to know about nutrition, but what about exercise? Especially when you're talking about losing stubborn fat, you're probably thinking you really need to bring it. After all, everyone always says, go hard or go home, right? There's certainly a time to push yourself, but if all you ever do is go hard, you'll surely run yourself into the ground, making it nearly impossible to get where you want to be. So then, what exactly should you do? First of all, if you're not strength training, you're missing out on one of the most powerful fat loss tools there is. Because while sure, cardio typically will burn more calories during the exercise itself, strength training is going to burn more in the long run. This is because for one, again, having more muscle means you burn more calories at rest. And two, you get something called EPOC, which stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, which basically means that your body continues to burn more calories as it recovers from that training. And this can even happen for up to a couple of days after your exercise. But with most forms of cardio, as soon as your heart rate returns back to normal, you stop burning extra calories. So typically a mixture of strength training and cardio is going to give the best results, but it's the type of cardio where I think a lot of people get things twisted. A lot of people think they need to absolutely crush themselves with high intensity cardio sessions to burn the most calories. And while it's true, especially for the amount of time that you do the exercise, things like HIIT cardio are going to burn more calories per minute. It's also very hard to recover from, so if you add that on top of strength training, on top of a calorie deficit, on top of everything that comes along with being more tired from dieting, what ends up happening is you crush yourself with these workouts, but now you're so drained and have no energy that you end up laying around the house and not doing much activity that you normally did, and you basically end up negating all the extra calories burned because now you're not moving around through the day and you net no gain. So this is why I typically recommend more steady state cardio for people, and maybe throwing in a little hit here and there, especially if you just really like it. But you always have to remember, much like with the calories, your body will adjust and adapt to whatever you do. So whatever you're doing now for cardio to keep seeing results, you're going to have to end up doing more over time. And unfortunately, it seems like your body adapts pretty fast to cardio. Personally, I think one of the more underrated things, not just for cardio, but for fat loss in general, is to take up more regular walking. I personally used a lot of walking when I got down to my leanest condition ever. Honestly, at the end, I was doing about an hour every single day, but there was just no way I was going to be able to push myself with higher intensity cardio at that point. And the reason walking works so well is because it's an easy way to get more calorie burn. It's easy to recover from. It's not going to drain you so much. And your body preferentially burns fat at that type of intensity. So it just has a lot of benefits. But of course, with everything, there's always trade-off. And the trade-off here is doing walking is going to take more time. So if you have a shortage of time, then you have to consider what's going to be more important to you or what's more realistic. But if you can do it, picking up your walking can really help a lot. 
All right, now I wanna give you some kind of rapid fire tips, some things that you need to consider that may not be as important as the other things, but especially the further along you get, the more these things can matter and can be the reason why you get stuck. Do not forget to prioritize things like sleep, controlling stress, and adequately hydrating yourself, because if you don't, it's gonna make things much more difficult. Also consider here, while the video title is about belly fat, this goes for any area you consider to be stubborn because unfortunately we cannot spot burn fat. So whatever area you tend to notice and struggle with the most, that's probably gonna be your stubborn area, which means it's gonna be the last to go and you're just gonna have to get that much leaner to get that off. Belly fat is a common area, but it's a little different for everyone. And don't forget when you're done dieting, unless you wanna keep eating these super low calories forever, you wanna make sure you do something called reverse dieting where you slowly increase your calories so you can get your calories back up to a better spot without gaining a bunch of weight back. Because if you go back to what you were doing before, I promise you're gonna gain that weight back fast. Now to make sure you know how to adjust calories and get that body you want, make sure you check out this top video and I will tell you how to go through this process. Otherwise, I think you'll like this bottom video instead. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll see you at one of those other videos.